Hi everyone, my name's Murray Winniata, probably better known to lots of people watching this video as NZ Tech Freak. Uh, and I'm producing this video for the Clove blog, who have kindly agreed to host some content I wanted to produce around this phone, the Samsung Galaxy S2, and perhaps a few other issues around Android and the mobile cell phone world in general. Uh, first thing you'll notice about this video is that the Galaxy S2 is already out of the box so I'm going to skip right over the customary unboxing and go straight to something new that maybe you haven't seen demonstrated on this phone so far if you do want an unboxing head to YouTube you'll find dozens of them there uh, if you're anything like me you've probably already seen most of them while you were impatiently waiting to get your hands on this phone yourself so anyway what we have here is a generic USB on the go cable. These can be had right now from eBay for about four dollars. If you were thinking of waiting until the Samsung official ones come out, uh, you'll be waiting probably in the order of four to eight weeks and they're likely to be a bit pricier than this. Anyway, we're going to go straight ahead and plug it in and what you'll notice is in the notification tray a pop-up says USB host cable connected. Then after that, we can simply plug in a drive. If we plug it in here, now what you'll see is USB device connected, and it's going to start doing a media scan of that drive. To see what's on the drive, we're just going to go into Samsung's My Files File Explorer. And when you scroll to the bottom you'll see a folder called USB storage and at the moment it's got a little white icon of a memory card overlying it and that only happens when you've got something connected in USB host mode so if we go right in you'll see SDA which is the SD card that's connected now if you have more connected via a hub you'll have SDA, B, C and so forth uh, so from here we can open Word documents if we wanted or we can get straight on into watching video. So if we do that, the liberty of loading a few HD movie trailers onto here. Uh, so here's one for the upcoming Pirates of the Caribbean movie. And if I just pause this briefly, you can see that it's an MKV file container that the video is housed in and the resolution is 1920 by 800 so not quite full HD but nevertheless very high resolution to be playing on a phone and if we let it keep going what you're going to notice is that the play black is absolutely flawless and probably doesn't show up that well on the video here but on screen it's absolutely stunning and the difference in clarity between this and the original Galaxy S is quite apparent. So if we exit that, so remove the cable. One thing that's worthwhile showing is that Samsung Galaxy S2 takes what's called a micro USB B specification cable, and I don't know how well that's showing on screen there, but this cable has little beveled edges on its connector and that's what you'll be accustomed to seeing in your micro USB connected mobile phones and devices. The only reason I mention that is there are cables that are micro USB A spec floating around eBay and the like and if you pick one of those up it's not going to connect with your device. In terms of connecting other devices I had a bit of a play with that today and bad news is that USB keyboards don't work, USB mice don't work, USB gamepads don't work, which was really disappointing for me and I imagine will be similarly disappointing for lots of other people. Uh, one thing you will find with other devices, if they need a reasonable amount of power to be supply supplied over the USB, the Galaxy S2 is not going to be able to give enough. So here for example I've got a 500 gig portable drive and it can't be supplied enough power to run from the Galaxy S2. Fortunately there is a way around that and if you have something like one of these, 
is an externally powered USB hub. Just plug the power in. Now with that connected, our USB drive has enough power to run. It's been supplied by the hub. And if we plug the hub into our USB host cable, we'll get USB device connected again. And now it's picked up that it's got one plugged in. And if we go in, again it's SDA, there's only one connected. And if we go through, it's going to have everything that's on that drive. So we can go in, once media scanning is finished, we can play movies or music from the drive, open Word documents, basically do anything in a file format that the Samsung Galaxy S is capable of dealing with. I've also tried larger hard drives, uh, typically those that come with their own power supply, so one and two terabyte drives, and I've successfully managed to connect those also, providing they're formatted in the FAT32 file format rather than the NTFS file format, which the Samsung Galaxy S2 isn't able to read. So that's just a quick rundown on USB host and the Samsung Galaxy S, which you may not have seen on the internet so far. And to follow this up, I might just do a quick demo just to illustrate Bluetooth keyboard and mice connectivity with Samsung Galaxy S2, which is every bit as good as it was with its predecessor, the Galaxy S1. Just wanted to finish off this quick look at some of the less seen connectivity options of the Samsung Galaxy S2 with a quick demonstration of Bluetooth mouse and keyboard. So as you can see, driving the mouse on screen, a left click is select, right click is back, pushing on the scroll wheel brings up contact sensitive menus, and of course you can scroll through lists with the scroll wheel as well. If we duck into the browser, just on the home screen, my typing is terrible. As you can see, the keyboard's working perfectly well with this as well. Now, this isn't so useful a setup right at the minute because at the end of the day you're still stuck with a 4.3 inch screen but when Samsung brings out the MHL cables cable adapters for the Galaxy S2 in perhaps one to two months time this suddenly becomes very very useful for connecting this setup to your television and controlling the Galaxy S2 remotely with Bluetooth. I did try today to see whether you can do SD video out via the Samsung Galaxy S2 3.5mm audio jack and unfortunately you can't. So Samsung didn't include that legacy connection option that you have available on the Galaxy S1 and several of their other devices. So at the moment we're stuck with a 4.3 inch screen, gorgeous as it is, and awaiting Samsung to release the MHL cables onto the market and I think it's fair to say that it's pretty poor of Samsung not to actually have provided both the USB on-the-go adapter and the MHL cable adapter in the retail box for the Galaxy S which is their flagship device. If you look at other manufacturers like Nokia you'll see them providing all of the required connectivity cables and adapters inside the boxes for their flagship devices. So anyway that's, that's all for today, quick look at USB on the go and Bluetooth keyboard and mouse with the Samsung Galaxy S2 and this is NZ Tech Freak signing off for the Clove blog.